Hey there, I'm Douglas from DraftBit. In this tutorial, we're going to explore the scroll view component and learn how to implement scrolling functionality in your application. A scroll view is a container component with scrolling capabilities, allowing users to view content that overflows the screen. We use scroll views to enhance the user experience when displaying large amounts of data or images that don't fit the screen at once. Let's start by adding a regular view to our app in this view, I'll add 10 image components. As you'll be able to see, the images are going to overflow the screen. So what we're going to do now is in our home component, I'm going to go to the component picker, click add, then I'm going to add 10 images. And there you go. We now have 10 images in our view. And what, what we're going to do, we're going to try and scroll through them. And as you can see, it actually scrolls the entire device. We're not able to scroll through these images. While you can enable scrolling at the screen level to scroll all content, right? So if we go to home, we go to config, here we'll see where it says scrollable. And if we enable this, we'll be able to scroll through this list. But this is at the screen level. So we can scroll through. And yeah, I guess this is fine for most cases where you just want to scroll through all that uh, data. But then there are situations where we want uh, certain sections to remain static. So, for example, if you want a fixed header or, you know, a fixed section above this scrollable section, right? And we want another section above here where it's fixed and this can scroll under it, then this is not going to cut it. And then for that case, that's where we need to use the scroll view. So, yeah, let's get rid of everything. And then we're going to go through how do we add the scroll view to the screen. To illustrate this, let's create a setup with a static header at the top and the scrollable content below. So first, I'll add a view. And this view is going to contain an image. Then let's add some text. And then let's add finally a button. And then what I want to do, I want to go on styles um, whilst clicking this view and I want to change the direction to be row. And then what I want to do after that, I want to have, the, I want to go to the button and then I want to give the button a height. Just say 10. Then I go back to the view. Then I want these to be aligned to the center. So I go back here, then I'm going to center align these. Then you see that uh, they're not, they don't really have spaces in between. So to solve that, I go to gap and then I'm just going to say a gap of 10. And then, yeah, that looks decent. And then, so this is our fixed header. Then below this, I'm going to have um, those images that we can scroll through. So now you see the situation where we would need a scroll view, right? So below this, so let me close the view, go back to the home component, click add on the component picker. Then I'm going to search scroll view. So the scroll view is now below this header. And inside the scroll view, I'm going to add 10 images. So yeah, I'll just skip through this part. Yeah, and we now have 10 images in our scroll view. And what I want to do, I want to add some space in between these images because you see they're touching. And to do that, we just go to gap. Then we have a gap of 10. So gap adds space in between components. So now we have spaces. And what I want to do, I want to center them. Uh, if we come here, we can just center these and as you can see they're now centered and since this is a scroll view we're now able to scroll through these and you see they now go under this uh, static section or static header whatever you want to call it we're now able to scroll through so yeah this is a perfect example of why we would need to use the scroll view over the um, you know the already provided uh, scrollable property that's available in our screens uh let's dive into the configuration properties of the scroll view. So if we click the scroll view uh, and then we click here on the right side where it says configs. So the first thing that we see is the component name. This says the component name in the components tree. It's default to scroll view. So when you change this, it changes this in the component tree. And why do we want to do this? So sometimes like your application might be become so big that you have four or five uh, sections that are scroll views. And sometimes it's a bit, you know, complicated remembering which is which. So you might want to give these, uh, you know, proper descriptions like you can call this maybe the feed uh, view, you know, whatever you want. Then up next, we have horizontal. This allows content to scroll horizontally if enabled. 
so horizontal is left to right and as you can see right now our content is scrolling vertically up to down so if we enable horizontal our content is going to scroll from left to right and as you can see our content now scrolls from left to right and up next show horizontal scroll indicator so as we scroll horizontally there's this indicator at the bottom right uh, we can decide by default it's shown we can decide to hide this and then we'll no longer be able to see it and as you can see we can now scroll through this list without being able to see it let's have this back to normal then up next we have show vertical scroll indicator as you can see when we're scrolling there's this indicator that shows up on the right side we can actually turn that off and we're no longer able to see it and as you can see we can now scroll without seeing that and then up next we have bounce so this enables content to bounce at the edges when scrolling right so yeah to better see this on your device preview go to ios and as you can see so what bounce means is when i'm scrolling down and i reach the end right it's going to bounce a bit as you can see it bounces back down and if i turn this off now when i scroll down and i reach the end it doesn't bounce so i've reached the end now and it just remains that stuck at the end but so if you want that you know bounce a little bounce as you try to scroll and you've reached the end then this is the property for that let's reset everything back to normal uh let's go back to our web preview and up next we have allow touch events so this controls if touch events dismiss the keyboard uh, the default is never so basically if we have a form and sometimes we don't want uh, when a user clicks outside we don't want to dismiss the keyboard right um, then sometimes we want that behavior such that when a user clicks outside um, the keyboard is dismissed so this is where we can control that behavior then up next we have paging enabled this stops the scroll view at multiples of its sizes useful for pagination yeah so some of these I can't really test them out because the video will take too long. But basically, um, when true, the scroll view stops at multiples of this scroll view size when scrolling. So if, for example, our scroll view has like maybe 12 items, it's going to stop maybe at 3, then it's going to stop maybe at 6, then it's going to stop at 12. At each of these points where it stops, we can fetch the data. So then lastly, we have snap to interval. So this makes the scroll view stop at specific intervals also good for pagination so these two they allow us to have pagination snap to interval you're telling the the scroll view that i want you to stop at these certain spots and once you stop at those spots then i can then uh, have like an action that goes and fetches some extra data bring it back to the view and thereby we have pagination then up next let's go to data so on data we have scroll enabled so scroll enabled uh, this basically just means we're able to scroll through our list and when we disable this we can say false then our list becomes non-scrollable now we can no longer scroll through our list yeah let's have that back to normal next let's take a look at the interactions and on interactions we have on refresh and on scroll so on refresh triggers actions like a pull to refresh gesture when the list or the view is refreshed then on scroll executes an action while the user is scrolling so anytime you're scrolling uh, the on scroll action runs so let's test this out let's click on the on refresh then when this happens let's just add a console log and then we're just going to say user is refreshing the list yeah, so again, it's not really a list per se. It's a scroll view, but the contents that are inside it are usually a list. Uh, then on scroll, we'll just say user is scrolling. And then on device preview, let's go back to our iOS. And then once we have our iOS device open, let's open the console logs. And then what we want to do, we want to trigger the on scroll. So just by scrolling, right, it's going to say user is scrolling because that's what we told it to do. In the on scroll, we told it that when this is triggered, just print to the console that user is scrolling. And you can replace this with anything that you want. Uh, you can make an API request to get uh, more data from the back end when the user is scrolling. So basically, you can do whatever you want in here. And then let's try to refresh the list. So by pulling it down, it's going to try to refresh 
And when once that happens, you're going to see user is refreshing the list. And yeah, that's how that runs. Uh, let's close that and go back to web preview. Finally, let's go to the styles. So on styles, we just have one component specific style, which is the refreshing color. So remember when we were scrolling down that list and a loading indicator appeared, so we can change that color here. So we can change the color. When it appeared, it was, I think, gray or black. We can change that color to whatever color we want. And that's it for our tutorial on the scroll view component. You now know how to set up scrollable content in your app, create static sections and customize scrolling behavior. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Dropbit tutorials.